Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use async storage in a React Native app. So first off I'll just create my um, React Native app. I'm choosing the blank template. And once that's installed, I'll install the um, async storage uh, package. So the Expo async storage or React Native async storage package has been deprecated and so now it's recommended to use this package here. I'm going to add a button because I want to be able to show you setting and saving and incrementing um, a value that you want to save in async storage so that when you refresh your app it will still have that value that you've set. And I want to import the async storage that I have installed. I'm going to want some state for this app, so one state I want is whether it's loading, and that's because um, it's asynchronous to store and get the data, and so I'll be using some awaits there, and if it's taking a long time for whatever reason, I want to show a loading screen. I also want a counter, which I'm going to be saving as a value in the async storage. I want that to default to zero. I'm going to have two text boxes to input a greeting. So I want what the greeting is, like hi, hello, and I want the name of the person to be greeted and I'll save that as an object to async storage so I can show you how to save objects to async storage and get them back out again. Greeting info is going to be the object that I'm going to save. So the first function I want to write is a get data function. So this is an async function and what that's going to do is it's going to go and get multiple keys from the async storage. So that's why I'm going to use the multi get. I'll link the documentation in the description below if you want to see different ways you can call async storage. But multi get is a good way to get multiple keys. So you pass an array of strings that are the keys. Seems to be a convention to prefix them with at from their documentation, so I've done that. And that will return an array of the string and the value. So the string that um, that's the key will be the, in the first index and the, um, the value that's stored in that, against that key will be in the second index. So here I am checking the keys. And depending on which key it is, I'm going to be setting my state. I want an int for the um, count because I want to be incrementing it, so I'm going to pass it to an int. If we haven't set it, it's going to return an undefined, so it won't be a number. So I'm checking if it's a number, and if it isn't, 
um, then I'll set the count to zero and if it is then obviously I'll use my count because it's a number. So I'll also want to set my greeting info. So I want to do a JSON pass. So basically when you save to async storage you want to pass in a string so you can't pass an object directly and that's why I'll need to JSON pass my value that I've saved in async storage. An alternative to the multi-get is to call the um, get item function individually for each key but it's preferred to actually just call multi-get if you've got multiple keys. Most of the time when I'm doing things I might use it for high scores or something like that and so I'm actually only getting um, one particular key. So this is how you would do it for if you wanted to just get one key. I'm just showing you in case in your use case you've only got one key to get. So it's pretty similar but you're calling the function directly and getting the value directly back. You don't need to loop through an array to find the value. Once again, if um, you haven't previously set the key, then it's going to return undefined. And so that's why if it's not a number, I'll return, I'll set the count to zero because that's where I want to start from. This is me doing the same thing, but for if I wanted to get an uh, object out of the uh, async storage. So I still call get item in exactly the same way, I just pass in the key. And I still set my greeting in the same way. Okay, I can see there that I've actually said set count, that should be set greeting info. So I'll then want to uh, use effect, which basically is sim similar to component did mount, and I'll call get data so that once the components are loaded, it'll call get data, load up any existing data if there is any, and if it's still loading, then it will show return, it'll show show a view which will have text that says it's loading. You could return anything you wanted here. You don't really need it too often. It's usually pretty quick, but it's good to have it just in case it's taking a while for whatever reason. So this is a function that I want to use to increment my counter. So I'm going to have a counter on screen and a button that you press to increment it. And when you increment it, I want it to set the count in async storage so that if you refresh the app, then um, it will re set the count back to whatever you were on previously. I'll also set state so that the update is reflected on screen. So I'm calling set counter to set the state of the counter variable. And it'll trigger a refresh and re-render. So this is where I'll show my counter. And I'm going to add a button so that I can increment the count. I 
on press or call my increment counter. So I'm going to add a divider here just to make my UI look a little bit better. It doesn't need to look particularly great. I mean, it's just an example of how to show you how to do something. It's not a tutorial on how to style React components. So just some basic padding here just to make things look a little bit less clustered. Also, if I've got any greeting info that's been saved, I want to show the greeting on screen. That's just so that I can show you when it's being saved and prove that it's being loaded. So if there's greeting info set, then I want to show the greeting and the name. If there's not any greeting info, then I want to just show that there's no greeting info saved. So next up I'm going to have two text inputs, one for the greeting and one for the name of the person so that the user can enter it and save it. So I'm going to use my set greeting state here. I'm going to give it a placeholder so the user knows what to enter. And the value is going to be greeting. So on, on the change of text it's going to call set greeting and it will from there um, refresh the components and how re-render the views. So I also will want a button here and the button's going to be so I can save whatever's entered in these um, inputs. I don't want it to auto save like I did with the increment count. For this one I'm just going to make the user manually choose to save. So I have to press this save greeting button in order to um, save the greeting info in async storage. Cool, so I've got a save greeting um, function that I need to create now, so I'll go do that. It's an async function because it's going to be updating the async storage which requires an await. So first I'll set up what I want to save into my um, async storage. And it's just going to be an object with greeting and name. So I'm doing this to show you how to save objects into your async storage. And I'll just set the item in the same way, but I'll need to call JSON stringify so that I can save a string into this async storage. And because I am updating the value in async storage, I want to set the greeting info to be my new greeting info. And so that will show under saved greeting. I want to give a bit of basic styling to the input just to make it look a bit more obvious and be easier to click into.
cool so now I have that I should be ready to run so I'm just going to do an expo start here that'll mean that I can access the app inside e the expo app cool so it's loaded if I click increment count I can do that and then if I refresh you'll see that I've still got my count there now if I enter, okay so greeting's not working, I'll check that out in a minute if I enter text then it will enter for um, the name but let's figure out why greeting's not working, so I've got the set greeting there, that's definitely correct ah uh, okay um, it looks like I've got I've forgotten to set greeting info but I'll do that in a minute. I've also realized that I forgot to set that my is loading should be um, false after the get data is called and I'll also set the initial state to true so that it actually shows my is loading screen. So yeah, that's definitely set there. And if I go back up, I can see that this should be set greeting info because that's the that's where I, what I want to set to show some saved greeting so here I am typing and it works now and if I refresh it shouldn't um, it shouldn't save because I didn't click that save button but now if I type in something else and save the greeting you can see that I've got a save greeting now I can increment my count and if I reload my incremented count has stayed and so is my hi YouTube greeting so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you have please like and subscribe I'll see you again, guys again soon